So unit six is talking about trigonometric identities and 6.1 is focusing on eight fundamental identities, which are the reciprocal, quotient, and Pythagorean identities found on pages 290 to 298 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is 30.5, where we need to demonstrate understanding of trigonometric identities. And our lesson objectives today is, first of all, to learn what an identity is, to learn where the eight main identities come from, and to use trigonometric identities to help simplify expressions. So an identity is an equation that is true for all permissible values of the expressions on both sides of the equation. So here's a simple one as an example. 3x plus 2x equals 5x. So it doesn't matter what we put in for x. We know that when we add 3x and 2x together, we get 5x. So say we said x is equal to 4. And then we would say 3 times 4 plus 2 times 4 should be 5 times 4. And that's 12 and 8, and, and that is 20. So 12 plus 8 does equal 20. So it's just a, an identity is just an equation in which the left-hand side does equal the, the right-hand side. Reciprocal identities. There are three of them. The first one that we know is cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine, and cotan, which is the reciprocal of tan. The quotient identities we're going to find by using the unit circle. So remember, we said any point on the unit circle had the coordinates cosine, comma, sine. That was from unit four. And we know that this makes a right triangle, which means that the horizontal side is cosine and the vertical side is sine. And this is our angle. So the first quotient identity is just saying, well, tangent of this angle is opposite side over the adjacent side, so tan is sine over cos. And then using this concept that cotan is the reciprocal of tan, so if tan is sine over cos, then cotan is cos over sine. So the Pythagorean identities are all formed by the same right triangle that we just drew, so I'll just redraw it here. Right triangle that has cosine on the horizontal side and sine on the vertical side. And this being a unit circle, then the hypotenuse is one. So the first identity is just using the Pythagorean identity, which just says um, a side squared plus another side squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. So sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one. Now we're gonna find two more Pythagorean identities. And the first one we're gonna find by dividing this by sine squared x. And we're going to divide both sides by sine squared x, which means I have to divide every term by sine squared x. Well, sine squared x divided by sine squared x is just 1. We learned last slide that cos divided by sine is cotan, which means that cos squared divided by sine squared is cotan squared. And we know that 1 divided by sine is cosecant, so 1 divided by sine squared is cosecant squared. So that is our second identity. So um, they have just flipped the one in the cotan squared. Doesn't really matter. It is the same identity. Now the next identity is we're going to find by dividing everything by cos squared theta, or cos squared x in this case. So when I divide each thing by cos squared x, I get sine squared over cos squared. Well, sine divided by cos is just tan. So sine squared over cos squared is tan squared. Cos squared divided by cos squared is just 1. And 1 over cos is secant, so 1 over cos squared is secant squared. And there is our next identity. Again, the 1 and the tan squared are just in different spots, but it's still the same identity. So here are our Pythagorean identities. All right, so an example. It says, determine the non-permissible values in radians for the equation secant x divided by tan x. And b, we're going to simplify that expression. So. Let's talk about non-permissible values. We know that non-permissible values are values that are going to give us a zero in the denominator. So we take a look at tan, and we need to know where tan x is equal to zero, because that is not allowed, and that it would be a non-permissible value. So we pull up our unit circle. I just use the first quadrant here, and we look for tan, which on our unit circle we had called the third coordinate, and that means that tan x is equal to zero at zero, and it says in radians. So at zero, um, also if we move all the way around the unit circle, it would be over here at pi 
it would be a 2 pi, it would be a 3 pi, etc, etc, etc. So, we're now familiar with something called the general solution. So we know that tan x, or x, cannot equal any multiple of pi, either in the positive direction or the negative direction. So we could say pi plus um, pi n, where n is any integer. So that would mean pi minus pi or pi plus pi, um, our value cannot exist there. So this is our non-permissible values. Now we need to simplify the expression. Well, it may look like it's a simple expression already, but it's not. We can simplify by making a substitution for both these things. So secant x we know is 1 over cos x. And tan x we know is sine over cos x. Now this doesn't look like it's simpler, but we do know that when we divide a fraction by a fraction, that we take the second fraction and we flip it and we turn it into a multiplying question. So we flip the second fraction and it's now cos x over sine x. We can see that the cos x's cancel out. We get one over sine x. And to finish this off, we would then call that cosecant x. So we've simplified this fraction into a different identity and by doing that we use a reciprocal identity and then a quotient identity. Okay one last identity example. It says verify the equation 1 plus tan squared x equals secant squared x numerically for x equals 3 pi over 4. So what we need to do is then replace tan squared x and secant squared x with a number. So let's just take a look here, one plus. Now, remember that tan squared x is the same as saying tan x squared equals secant x squared. That this squared is really just on the outside of, that, of, of tan. Now, x is three pi over four. So now what we're saying is, well, tan x means that tan of three pi over four. Well, 3 pi over 4 isn't on our unit circle, but we do remember the cast rule. Sorry, it isn't on this version of the unit circle. So, so 3 pi over 4 is actually over here. So we know that tan has to be negative, and it is going to be whatever tan of pi over 4 is. But So it makes it negative 1. Now secant x we don't have on the unit circle, but we do have cos x. And we know that cos x is, in this case, root 2 over 2. Now, we're also in the second quadrant, so that makes it negative root 2 over 2. So to find out what secant x is, well, we take that and we flip it. So it's negative 2 over root 2. Now, we can't have a root in the denominator, so we will multiply the top and the bottom by root 2. supposed to be a 2. And so we get negative 2 root 2 on the top over plain old 2. So we can plug that into the, the equation now as well. And these 2's actually cancel each other out, so we just get root 2. Alright, so we get negative root 2 squared. So let's check it out. We're verifying this equation, which means we have to see if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. 1 plus 1 squared, which is just 2. And this is negative root 2 squared, which is also equal to 2. So we have verified that this equation, or this identity, I guess, um, works for x equals 3 pi over 4. So in summary, it says any value substituted into an identity will satisfy both sides of the identity, provided it is not a non-permissible value. Secondly, we know that there are eight main identities. There's some quotient identities, reciprocal identities, and Pythagorean identities. Your best bet is to have them in one place, maybe on a recipe card, um, so you can easily access those. These identities can be used to simplify other expressions. And that's it. So your assignments on pages 296 to 298. Um, give a couple questions a try, and we'll see you in class tomorrow.